Welcome to the world of material science. My name is Professor Bonnet. In this video we will be learning about different types of electrochemical corrosion, under which conditions they occur and how they can be avoided. We will start with uniform corrosion. If the appropriate resistance is not taken into account when selecting materials that come into contact with acids, considerable material erosion can occur. This figure schematically shows the damage pattern of this corrosion. If the corrosion behavior of metallic materials is not sufficiently taken into account, rapid damage can occur. For example, in the case of st steel sheets in continuous contact with hot acetic acid, the sheets can become thinner in a very short time. Sometimes even if the material was selected to be resistant to acetic acid, in the case of organic products, especially natural products, additional attention must always be paid to the type and concentration of any impurities. In the case of acetic acid, this could be contaminated with not inconsiderable proportions of formic and propionic acid, which have a significantly higher dissociation rate and thus aggressiveness, so that severe damage can occur due to surface corrosion. That is to say, material is removed uniformly over the entire surface. In the videos on high alloy steel, we learned that stainless steel does not have stainless properties because the main alloying element iron is noble, but rather because of the passive layer of chromium oxide that forms on the surface if the chromium content is sufficient. In the case of many of these types of stainless steel, however, Local damage to the passive layer can occur in media with a high chloride concentration, leading to progressive corrosion. Once started, this so-called pitting corrosion is almost unstoppable, since a corrosion-aggressive medium always, almost always forms at the bottom of the hole, which for geometric reasons is neither washed away nor diluted to any great extent. The corrosion rate here may well be several millimeters per year. From the media side, the damage is sometimes barely visible and only comes to bear when the hose breaks through. The photos show a compensator hose made of X6CRNITI 1810, a high alloy steel with 18% chromium, which should be sufficient to form a passive layer of chromium oxide. However, Due to the presence of chloride ions, the passive layer was penetrated and pitting corrosion occurred. The holes may look small on the surface, but in cross-section the severe damage behind the pitting can be seen. Protection against pitting corrosion is provided by alloying with molybdenum. The addition of molybdenum stabilizes the passive layer. Immersing two different conductors, that is to say electrodes, in a conductive liquid, that is to say an electrolyte, produces a galvanic element of a galvanic cell. A voltage is generated between the conductors. This voltage depends on the material the conductors are made of. For zinc and copper, for example, a voltage of 1.1 uh, volts is generated. If a circuit is connected to this voltage, a current starts to flow. In the process, the less noble conductor is eroded and dissolves. The magnitude and direction of the voltage depends on the material of the conductors and their place in the electrochemical series. In the electrochemical series, each material is connected to a hydrogen electrode via an electrolyte and the voltage then produced is written down in order of magnitude and direction. The values for all common metallic materials can be found in good textbooks. I have compiled some important values for us here. As we can see, different voltages can be generated with different conductors. All metals with a positive standard reduction potential, SRP, are called noble metals. And all metals with a negative standard reduction potential are called base metals. All noble metals have a certain resistance to acids. Accordingly, all base metals tend to go into solution to a greater or lesser extent. However, we will see that this equation 
does not always work quite so simply. In the constructive combination of more noble materials with less noble ones, the presence of an electrolyte can lead to the formation of a local galvanic cell, as we have just learned. Here, rapid erosion of the less noble component in electrolytic solution can occur. Here, the combination of small noble parts on large base parts, for example copper screws on steel sheets, is less tragic than vice versa. This figure schematically shows galvanic corrosion. The considerable removal of material from the base metal 1 at the contact point is clearly visible. Depending on the exact composition, stabilization and heat treatment, carbides may form along the grain boundaries of high alloy steel. The critical temperature range for the precipitation of chromium carbides is between 450 and 850 degrees Celsius for arsenitic chromium nickel steel. As always, the carbides precipitate preferentially along the grain boundaries. Carbides consist of Me23C6. Me stands here first of all quite generally for metal, whereby it consists for the most part of chromium and in some of iron. Thus, the chromium content in these carbides is 70 to 80%. The immediate environment is thus correspondingly depleted in chromium and falls below the necessary chromium concentration for the formation of a stable passive layer. Thus, the corrosion resistance is comparable with that of sheep constructional steel. This intergranular corrosion, IGC, can therefore be avoided in two ways. First, by adding stabilizers. These bind the carbon so firmly that no chromium carbides are formed even at higher operating temperatures. Titanium and niobium are used. Accordingly, the steel is referred to as stabilized steel. Second, by using ELC steel. ELC here stands for extra low carbon. The solubility of arsenitic steel for carbon at 650 degrees Celsius is about 0.05%. At lower carbon contents in the steel, Virtually all carbon remains dissolved in the arsenide at this temperature and chromium carbides do not precipitate. ELC steel contains 0.03% carbon or less accordingly. Especially the 1810 CRNI steel is dangerous here because there are two types available. It can be either the 1.4301 or X5 CRNI 1810 with 0.05% carbon or the 1.4306 or X3 CRNI 1810 with 0.03% carbon. The former is highly susceptible to intergranular corrosion, the latter is IGC resistant. Thank you for your attention. In the next video we will learn about more types of electrochemical corrosion.